Last week, the top headline for real estate was that pending home sales number were down. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel or thanks for tuning in. My name is Mac Rogers and I'm a real estate broker here in the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area. So the headlines that I saw were, Americans hit the brakes on home buying activity last month previewing a challenging spring season. Or this one, straight from the National Association of Realtors. Pending home sales slipped 10.6% in February. Now, if you were just reading the headlines, you would probably say to yourself, I knew it, it's here, the housing bubble has finally arrived. A decline of 10.6%, that's huge, right? If you continue to read the Market Watch article, the first line of the article said, far fewer Americans signed deals to purchase homes in February than economists expected. Again, if you stopped reading at this point, you would have validated your initial response of here comes the bubble bursting, right? And if you look at the key highlights from the NAR article, you would have again been validated. Check out the highlights. One, pending home sales decreased by 10.6% in February in all regions showing a decline. Number two, after eight consecutive months of year over year gains, pending home sales decreased by 0.5% from a year ago. And number three, pending home sales index fell below 100 in the Northeast and West regions. An index of 100 is equivalent to the level of pending sales in 2001. So for the second straight month in February, each of the four major US regions witnessed month over month declines. Year over year results were mixed. Contract signings as stated dropped 10.6% in February. According to Lawrence Yoon, Chief Economist at NAR, the demand for home purchase is widespread. Multiple offers are prevalent and days on the market are swift, but contracts are not clicking due to record low inventory. Only the upper end of the market is experiencing more activity because of reasonable supply. Demand, interestingly, does not yet appear to be impacted by recent modest rises in mortgage rates. So let's let's unpack what he said over here on, the, on that quote. Number one, demand is widespread. Now we've talked about this over and over again on this channel. This inventory shortage is without exaggeration happening all over the United States. Number two, multiple offers are prevalent. This is such a common thing here in the Bay Area. I mean, in all of my 19 years in the real estate industry, I would say 95 to 97% of all the offers that I've written throughout the years were always up against other offers. Now, my realtor friends and network from all over the country are also experiencing it which is kind of cute, you know, because I would see them post, we had five offers on my listing and it was on the market for less than 30 days with 10 to 15 showings. Sometimes I want to tell them, hold my beer, please. Look, the markets that I serve over here, try 20 plus offers, five to seven days on the market with showings. We can't even count the number of showings. Plus, when you make an offer, better not make it contingent on anything and also give sweeteners like maybe free rent back or reimburse the sellers for any reports or expenses that they may, may have already incurred. And the third one, mortgage rate has not impacted demand yet. This is certainly interesting because the thinking out there, which I actually subscribe to as well, is that if we were to get these mortgage rates to keep going up, there will be a lot of more people that can't qualify and thus should slow demand and maybe, just maybe, we get a little bit of break in price increases. Even with the rates increasing, which will in turn make mortgage costs higher, rates are expected to remain relatively low at no more than 3.5% in 2021. This is by historical standards, still low. When we talk about a shortage of inventory, it's across all price ranges. Obviously, the US being a huge market, the price differences vary a lot. Homes in the $250,000 range, which we can't find over here in the Bay Area, have largely been driving home sales in the past several months. But 500,000 to less than $1 million are also experiencing sales shortage on inventory. The price range here in the East Bay is more like 800,000 to 1.5 million is what is experiencing a shortage in inventory. One thing that my clients have had to do is swallow the bitter pill of maybe, just maybe, they can't afford to buy where they wanna live. Which is really hard to swallow when you are buying a $1.2 million home with 20 to 40% down. I know some of you are probably saying, boo hoo, cry me a river, $1.2 million. But hey, it's real. And everyone that I talk to will tell you that if they can get up and leave and move somewhere that is cheaper, they would do it. 
But sadly, life is more complicated than that. So if we have inventory right now, our sales number would go through the roof. Just to give you an example, in the market that I serve here in the East Bay, the price range, like I mentioned, is 800 to $1.5 million. These neighborhoods are all significantly different in makeup, economically and socially, but the competition is the same. People buying in the $800,000 have the same number of competition as the people buying in the $1.5 million range. Now here's a breakdown of the pending home sales by region. The Northeast down 9.2%. In the Midwest, down 9.5% last month. The South declined 13%. In the West, it went down by 7.4%. The Northeast and the Midwest both down compared to the same time period last year. While the South and the Western region showed monthly decline, those numbers are still up compared to the same time period last year. So why is the pending home sales index important? Well, it's a leading indicator for the housing sector. If you were buying a house and signed a contract today, it would take 30 to 60 days to close that transaction. So. More pending sales would mean more closings in the next 30 to 60 days, which also means that less pending sales, less closings in the next 30 to 60 days. That's why pending contracts are a good forecasting tool for future closed sales. Think of it as orders that have yet to be fulfilled. One thing to note is that closing times vary throughout the United States. California takes 30 days or less, while other states can take 90 days on a normal transaction. So is this a cause for concern? Not exactly. If you read those two articles from MarketWatch and NAR, and I will put a link to those two articles in the description below, you get when you get down to the nitty gritty and the actual meat of the story, they cite several things that are causing the drop in pending sales. They cited severe weather and market watch cited mortgage rate increases and the biggest underlying problem that we have right now and you guessed it inventory my takeaway for this or the bottom line is be careful when you see the headlines and that just jump at you and you form a conclusion right away pending home sales are down because there is nothing to buy out there pending home sales are down because there was a severe weather in other parts of the country that made buyers put a temporary hold on their buying it's not down because demand is not there. It's not down because interest rates are increasing yet. Hey, if you guys have any questions or comments about the market, I'd like to get your feedback below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next update.